Hi, my name is Rita and reaching the Welcome to IP series where we talk about recent IP cases and development globally. If this is your first time joining us, please favorite my podcast on Anchor and also follow us on other platforms like Brika, Overcast, Listen Notes, Apple and Google Podcasts as well. For this episode to end the year, I decided to do a Christmas edition where we talk about the 2020 IP highlights and review from the best and the most controversial cases and I have with me a list of guests who will be talking about different areas of IP and trends we should look out for in 2021. Um, 12 questions for each speaker and a bonus question. I hope you guys enjoy listening. Thank you. So, for our first guest in the 12 Days of Christmas edition and IP series, I have with me Eric Pelton. Eric Pelton is a trademark attorney. I met him on Twitter. He, ha- he makes wonderful tweets about trademarks for SMEs and small businesses. So, I hope you guys enjoy listening to it. I hope you learned something. If you learned something, please let me know. But now I'm going to let our guest, our first Christmas guest, introduce himself on the show. Thank you. So would you like to introduce yourself to our listeners? Yes, thank you so much for having me on this podcast. My name is Eric Pelton. I'm based in Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C. in the United States. And my practice revolves almost exclusively around helping businesses protect their trademarks and deal with trademark matters, including searches, disputes, monitoring, registration, of course, everything to do with trademarks. And I've been doing this since I founded the firm, Eric M. Pelton and Associates, nearly 21 years ago. Prior to founding the firm, I was briefly an examiner at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office reviewing applications for approval uh, and rejection for the government. That's really nice. I mean, you have a very impressive um, profile. So I'm just going to ask you the questions. What are the rules? What is the role of trademark? Yeah, trademarks, of course, are important for any business to protect their brand, to protect whether it's brand names, product names, service names, or offerings, um, logos, slogans. But they are extra important, based on my experience, for smaller and medium-sized businesses. And that is because those businesses are less likely to be able to afford or to want to or to be able to litigate any disputes that might arise regarding the trademarks, whether they're disputes complaining about someone else using a similar name or disputes defending an allegation from someone else regarding a conflict. So trademarks are are really, of course, because the brand is so important to any business to communicate with its consumers as well. They're really one of the most important assets that any business, especially an SME, can own. Um, we're talking about how SMEs can protect themselves um, because the situation here in Nigeria is you see that SMEs are not really interested when it comes to IP registration. So what is your take on how SMEs can protect themselves? Yeah, here in the United States, it's not terribly expensive to register the trademarks. And this is such a great way for SMEs to protect themselves because the registration acts to protect them in two ways. One is by having the registration, of course, it makes it easier to deal with any infringements or any disputes or any online takedowns by being able to cite to the registration number. And the second is by having the registration, it means that the trademark is in the US PTO's public database, which is what so many brands are searching to try to clear new marks before they even launch them or before they file to register them. And 
just by appearing in that database, a mark is doing work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year to help avoid other people from choosing or trying to choose the same name. Great. So what would you say is the best form of marks to register? You know, trademark basically could be like a logo, the name, the sign, symbol, which is the best mark for an SME right. to register? The words are always the most important in our experience and in our advice to our clients. You know, there are always a, a handful of exceptions, but for the great majority of businesses, the words are going to be the most important thing to protect because in the United States, at least, when you protect the words by themselves, it will cover all fonts and styles and colors and variations of using those words and gets you better protection for the domain name and social media uses. And so it, it, it's a lot broader scope of protection for the words. Now, when a business has a creative logo, we recommend that they lo register the logo as well, but that they do that in a second application or a separate application. So what would you say is the best form of enforcement with regards to trademark as an IP? So here in the States, as I was saying, you know, by registering it, you get some kind of automatic in enforcement or similar to enforcement because the USPTO database is what's searched by so many people. And because the USPTO examiners are searching for conflicts when they're reviewing future applications. And so by appearing in that, you're in some ways doing some of the enforcement work automatically. But then when disputes arise, you know, there are a lot of options for how to enforce, but we find that the vast majority of trademark disputes, and especially those uh, involving SMEs, are resolved by communication, by using a law firm to send a cease and desist letter to the infringer, um, to notify them of the rights, and to uh, hopefully start a discussion to resolve it. Of course, the earlier, the sooner you can send that letter, the better, because the more time that the potential infringer, the more time and the more money and the more energy that they've invested in using the trademark, the more likely they are to put up a defense of it. So um, for 2020, we know the year started on a very good note and then we had the pandemic and then the lockdown. And we know that uh, we already had cases that were ongoing. What would you say um, was your best yeah, trademark case for 2020? Uh, you're right. 2020, of course, uh, has been quite, quite a interesting year. Um, not, well, of course, in, in many, many ways. And that has impacted trademarks as well not as important as all the different ways that it's affected our, our health and our economy yeah. and, and uh, other important things. But um, the, the biggest case in the U S in 2020 was a Supreme court decision that came down uh, in the late spring called booking.com. This was a travel uh, website where you can book and make reservations through and, yeah. and plan trips and booking.com had fought what the their refusal that the uspto had issued the refusal had been based on grounds that booking.com was generic that just adding the dot com didn't change the consumer impression of the word booking at all and that because the website featured bookings that it was generic and unprotectable unregisterable in the united states the supreme court however um, overruled the USPTO and said that it is registrable. Now, so this was a big case because it went to the Supreme Court, but this, uh, and it was a big case in the news, and it was a big case because it was actually the first Supreme Court hearing in the United States that was conducted uh, telephonically, uh, you know, not in person at the Supreme Court at, at the start of the 
um, lockdowns from the pandemic. But as far as affecting most trademark owners and businesses, the impact is very small because, of course, we recommend that that businesses do not choose trademarks that are very, very descriptive or generic or almost generic, because even if they are legally protectable, they are still very difficult to protect. And the range of protection will be relatively narrow or small, at least until the business, as they did in booking.com, can show many, many, many millions of dollars of advertising and promotion and sales and media coverage and all of these things that can help um, strengthen a brand that is very weak. But we generally advise clients that they're unlikely to be uh, to have the same budgets as booking.com and they're much better off choosing a, a name that is stronger and more distinctive from the start. Fantastic. Would you also say that the booking.com case was like the most controversial trademark case or what do you think? Do you have your own case that you feel is the most controversial so in trademark term, case I, I for I won't point to a single case, but I'll say that a single issue that is um, controversial and in the news and will continue into next year is that in 2020, we've seen the continued trend of applications to register uh, trademarks at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office for phrases that come out of the news or popular culture or politics or entertainment. And many, many of them fail to actually function as trademarks, that they're not going to be viewed as an indicator of source. But for example, um, when there were protests over the summer in the United States after the tragic you know, murder and killing of George Floyd, there were many trademark applications filed, not only related to Black Lives Matter themes, but to other um, phrases that were common in the coverage and in the incident, like I can't breathe um, and other items like that. And the vast majority of those will be refused for failing to function as actually acting as a brand name rather than just a phrase that appears on items or on apparel. A great, a great number of these applications are for apparel, of course. These all relate to the pandemic and to COVID-19. Yeah. There were also many, many dozens of trademarks filed for COVID-related themes and subjects. And many, many of those are also not likely to function as a trademark, but merely to express uh, an emotion or a theme or a phrase that's become popular uh, on social media or in the news, like I survived COVID-19 or something along those lines. And we're starting to see now as the USPTO reviews more and more <laughs> of these applications, we're starting to see so many of them be rejected, but this will not stop applicants from continuing to file them. The number of filing just continues to increase. Yeah. Because they don't understand uh, yeah. fully the nature. Yeah. The nature of the application process and what's registrable and what's not. What would you consider to be the impact of um, COVID-19 Yeah, Here in the United States, SMEs the good news is that the, U.S. Patent and Trademark Office's trademark operations were largely electronic and virtual before 2020. So while they certainly had to adapt and adjust um, yeah. for both applicants and for the examiners and the trademark office, the adaptations have not been tremendous. And so we're not seeing um, really any significant delays as a result of COVID-19 on the trademark office and on applications. If anything, although there was a short decline in the number of applications in the first few months, uh, we are seeing the number of applications continue to rise, many of them oh. coming from China, but, but even the number from within the United States uh, 
continues to rise as um, the economy improves and people and businesses and brand owners look towards the future. So, you know, now we are heading like December is like Christmas period. Everywhere is looking very festive. What are the things that SMEs have to deal with with regards to counterfeiting, um, trademark issues? What are those, you know, oh. gaps that, that are being exposed <laughs> yeah, by the festive yeah. period? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Or any I, other I mean, we're period. seeing, you know, the amount of counterfeiting and infringement that's happening online, of course, continues to grow and grow. And social media continues to cause problems. Of course, it brings a lot of wonderful tools and marketing for businesses, but the opportunity for infringements and counterfeits and knockoffs uh, continues to grow as well. And unfortunately, because of the lifespan of some of these things, um, you know, even if it only takes uh, a week to get something shut down, by then the damage may already have been done or the sales may already have been lost. And that I think would be particularly true even around the holiday season. So we're seeing more and more brands that want to monitor social media, want to learn how to do takedowns on social media sites and on Amazon, of course, with Amazon being uh, such a big provider of commerce and e-commerce. Many trademark applicants now are interested in the Amazon brand registry and how that can impact and help their brand once they receive a registration. So what would you, what is your most outrageous, what's the most outrageous trademark application you've ever seen? And um, do you think Amazon is helping um, SMEs in relation to um, trademark monitoring? Yeah, I don't, I don't know fully years. enough about the Amazon issues um, to, you know, to know whether or not what they're doing is really helping SMEs or, or hurting SMEs. Um, that's something I'd like to learn more and, and continue to help clients with. Um, I'm glad that Amazon is at least aware of the issues. And I think that they are trying to be balanced to, you know, to help small businesses. Um, But I'm also sure that there's more that they could be doing (laughs) as well. As far as outrageous trademark applications, I mean, one other interesting big trademark story here in 2020 um, in the United States has been the the brand names um, that have been discontinued in particular because they were um, offensive or based on um, improper treatment of racial issues or Native American issues here in the United States. I'm in Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C., and our, uh, you know, football team, American football team that used to be known as the Washington Redskins, of course, this summer announced after many years of pressure and protest and litigation they suddenly um, announced that they would no longer go by that name. And for at least the time being, they're now known <laughs> as the Washington football team. Um, but I, I was going to get to the outrageous part is that many people have tried to speculate what they might name the team or change the team to in the future and have filed trademark applications for all of these names, Washington yeah, this and Washington that with all kinds of different animals or themes and the vast majority of those are going to be rejected as improper uh, or not properly being used or not properly having the intent to use or being filed in bad faith perhaps and so that's created uh, some interesting issues and problems as the team searches for a new name it has to deal with all of these people who have kind of speculated and tried to file applications to to cash in on it at least that's my perception of it i can't prove that they're trying to cash in on it but that that's my guess great but do you think big brands actually bully small brands or do you think they're just doing 
an aggressive monetary. I think both. You know, I think that yeah, many big brands, business, you know, are aggressive in their monitoring and enforcement, and and they're entitled to if the law allows them to, of course. Um, but I do think that in more than just a yeah. small number of cases, the big companies take it too far by really making claims that are not proper or by using tactics and behavior that are not really proper. And they're doing this because they know that they have um, more resources and more money and that this, for any small business faced with defending it, it's going to be extremely difficult for them to afford to put up a real challenge. And so this has gone on for many, many years, and it's helped many of these big companies get even stronger protection because they've been able to successfully make claims that are not really great claims because the small businesses defending them have just not been able to, uh, you know, to afford to defend it. It just doesn't make sense. And so the big companies negotiate very favorable settlements or the small companies default on the cases. And this kind of activity ends up strengthening the brands even more because they can point towards this record of having past disputes that they resolved successfully. So this is a real problem that we've been seeing for many, many years. We're often on the side of defending the small businesses and we're used to the tactics of the big businesses and some who we believe are overly aggressive or bullies. Um, and it's a, it's a real challenge, but uh, the fight will, you know, continue. And I think that technology and social media and other things does give the small businesses some additional resources and tools that can help. Um, but it is an ongoing uh, battle. Um, do you have any life case that we can, you know, just... What of of means. of the so, bullying behavior? Uh, sure. Give me just a moment here. Yes. So there was a um, uh, a case last year. A brand um, of outdoor equipment and winter jackets and hats and gloves and these kind of things called Back Country. Um, that has a website called BackCountry.com and. Backcountry is a very descriptive term here in the United States for uh, being in the woods, being uh, skiing, doing these outdoor activities. And so their trademark was not terribly strong and they sent cease and desist letters and takedown notices and filed some oppositions to many companies that were using the backcountry term but we're all using it as part of a brand name that also included other words that made them more distinctive. And this finally backfired where one of the defendants was able to get a big news story written in a large newspaper about the case. And then all of a sudden the backcountry brand that filed all these cases faced a huge backlash from its customers from social media, from other news organizations, when it um, became apparent all of this activity that they had been doing. And they quickly had to apologize, had to withdraw the case. Uh, but the effect on their reputation and their business was significant, even though they dealt with the, the situation relatively quickly and relatively well when it arose. What are the trends we should be looking out for in 2021? with regards to trademark registrations and trademark protections for SMEs? Yeah, I think we will continue to see uh, significant growth in the number of applications and number of filings. A lot of times these are from businesses filing one trademark, their first trademark, Hello? whether it's a startup or whether it's a business that's been around for a few years and now can appreciate the, the insurance protection basically. Uh, that they get from registering it and recognizing that the costs are not tremendous and that the value provided in return for those costs is well worth the expense for an SME. 
and one particular industry that we're seeing tremendous growth in the last few years, and I expect that will continue into 2021 in the United States, is for um, cannabis and related industries featuring hemp or CBD in the United States as more and more areas um, reduce restrictions on that or legalize it. And there's been an explosion in filings in the last two or three years. And I expect that continue to continue into the next few years as well. Yay! Um, so wrapping up now, do you have any final words for SMEs on trademark as the best form of IP? Or would you advise that SMEs opt for a multi-layered IP protection? I, I would advise that Exploring multiple forms of IP protection is, of course, a great idea. But I do believe that trademark protection can provide the best value in most instances for SMEs um, because of the expense not being tremendous, because the protection can last forever as long as the mark is still in use, and because it works in two ways, as I indicated earlier in that it gives the registrant the and the owner a tool owning the registration to go out and enforce it, whether it's online or whether it's just a traditional uh, infringement or dispute, but also because it works automatically for the owner by appearing in that database, the USPTO, which is probably the most searched trademark database in the world. And by appearing on the register, it's going to automatically help prevent other companies from adopting similar names that might compete. And it's going to allow the examiners at the USPTO to cite the registration as a possible conflict with future applications. So for the value, you know, for um, really less than $2,000 in most cases, even when using an attorney to register a trademark, the the value and the benefits provided are really quite tremendous. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Eric. It's been a pleasure having you um, for this edition. I hope you had a good time as well. I had a good time. It's a, a pleasure and a privilege to join you and your audience on this recording as well. Yeah, so if anyone has questions or want to reach out to you in the U.S., how do they do Yeah, that? thanks so much for asking. Um, my website is just my name, Eric, E-R-I-K, Pelton, P-E-L-T-O-N, dot com. And you can find tons of resources there from articles to videos to my podcast uh, and much more. And I wrote a book, actually, that came out earlier in 2020, right around the time of the pandemic. Oh, wow. um, but the book is a great resource for SMEs to provide them with some background and tools and learn all about trademark fundamentals. And the book is called Building a Bold Brand. And they can find it on Amazon or find more details at buildingaboldbrand.com. Fantastic. Congratulations on the book. And <laughs> yeah, so thank you. And so we have come to the end of this episode with Eric Pelton on trademark for SMEs. If you learned something new, please let me know. Send me a voice note, a message to ipseriesinfo at gmail.com. You can also listen to IP series on, on other platforms like Brika, Radio Public Listening Note, Apple, Google Podcasts. Um, I have more guests and topics for you for this Christmas edition. So let me know what your thoughts are. Um, if you learned something new, um, if you have comments, anything you have to say, just let me know. But until the next guest series, thank you guys for always listening to my podcast. Cheers, guys. And Happy holidays. <laughs>